about four molecules. In fact, this straw amino stock structure from methane. Now this is what it looks like with Lewis dot. If I were to draw a three-dimensional version, and you know, God help us if I have to draw anything, but here we go. If you recall from your Vesper chart last year, that we had four uh, sets of electrons and four bonds around the central atom, which is part of here. They're going to be uh, apart in what we call a tetrahedral structure, dividing with 190.5 degrees. So you can have a hydrogen over here, a hydrogen over here, and then directly underneath it, you're going to have two hydrogens going out of the board, one out of the board, one behind the board. And of course, my brilliant artistic abilities here, I'm going to use a, uh, a dark wedge to show it coming right out of the board, and then dot line showing that it's going behind the board. And gosh, what a great representation that is. But you get the idea that if you take a look at this, if you remember from the structures that we did with the uh, styrofoam balls and the toothpicks for our, our model, model of the molecules, you can get these evenly spread apart. And if you just focus on just one carbon to hydrogen bond, carbon has um, a slightly greater pull of electrons. So we're going to find what we call a polar moment going in this direction right here. We use that symbol for a polar moment. Starting the hydrogen, which is the more positive, you see kind of a plus sign there, and the electrons being pulled in the direction of carbon. But all four of those are doing that. So that means there is not one area that is more positive or negative than the other when you take a look at the whole molecule. Because that negative part is being completely covered by equally powerful or not so powerful hydrogens. So this is known as a non-polar molecule. Now, like I said, most molecules are polar. This is an example of a non-polar. If I were to replace one of these hydrogens with a chlorine, a substance that they use to make decaffeinated coffee with. Uh, it's not really good for you, but there's still a little bit of it in that decaf coffee so it gives you a little extra kick of cancer. So, um, but this is, this is called, um, um, well, one name is uh, methyl chloride. It's also called chloral methane. Um, and uh, this loss, this hydrogen right here, and got replaced with a chlorine. So now it's different around there. And the fact that this is wicked electronegative means the electrons get pulled in that direction. These are getting pulled slightly in this direction. And that makes this a polar molecule. You have an inequality of charges around the central atom, which makes it polar. And like I said, the vast majority of molecules that we know are polar, which is why water dissolves an awful lot of substances. Water cannot dissolve non-polar substances. Oil is a non-polar substance. You ever heard the expression, oil and water don't mix? That's why. So, Getting back to this, <clears throat> contrast that with ammonia. The difference of electronegativity between nitrogen and hydrogen is 0.9. Um, so, which is more than double that of the difference between nitrogen and hydrogen. So, uh, as there have been 40 degree distributed hydrogen around nitrogen, it would be non-polar. But that is not what is happening here. So we take a look at the little stock structure again. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. Form single bonds here, here, and here. And you get that. 
had just been a hydrogen, as I was saying in that description there, that would be nonpolar. That is not nonpolar. This is polar to the nth degree. Polar because of this electron pair, which is very negative. And these are slightly positive. So this makes us a polar molecule. This is why they put ammonia into cleansers, because most of the dirt is a polar molecule. Most of the grime is a polar molecule. Now, some of the grime is nonpolar, which means they have to add something to it to take care of that. And that's where soap comes in, because soap is the salt of a nonpolar molecule, which we'll get into much, much later. But ammonia is great at cleaning material. Most of the things we deal with are acidic. We don't like tasting basic things because they taste nasty. It's bitter. Unless you live in the UK where they love bitters, and I cannot for the life of me figure that one out. The importance of polarity is that it helps predict what solutes will dissolve in what solids. And that's really important. Why do things dissolve the way they do? That's what this is all about. This means that polar molecules will dissolve polar molecules. When we say light dissolves light, polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. Okay? Water is polar. So guess what? Water is going to dissolve anything that is polar. A big tip for the nonpolar molecules is that if you see a molecule with carbons and hydrogens only, they are known as hydrocarbons, it is going to be nonpolar. If you change just one atom from a hydrogen to something else, like a chlorine, like I just showed you, which is what they do in sucralose, they take sugar, place a hydrogen with a chlorine, they now have sucralose, ta-da! Polar. Now, um, oh, that's not good. So, this thing. so the two big takeaways from this discussion is that covalent compounds do not break apart when they dissolve, and that the polarity will determine what is dissolved in what. And so the problem that we're dealing with today deals with the polar molecules. So in this case here, it says what uh, write the dissolving reaction for C3H7OH liquid and water. Now, yes, this is written correctly. This is something called an organic compound, and organic chemistry has its own way of writing things that's completely different from what we have learned up to this point, which is what we call inorganic chemistry. And there's a lot more organic compounds in life than there are inorganic compounds. But they're harder to figure out and name and all that, and we get to do that later on this semester. Anyway, so how are we going to write the dissolving reaction for this? Well, first of all, is it polar or nonpolar? It's polar. Is it? Um, so that means water will dissolve it. But is this ionic or covalent? The answer is covalent because there's no metal in it. So that means it's not going to break apart. So we start with what we call this is propanol. Propanol, an alcohol. Dissolved in water becomes aqueous propanol. It's that simple. Like I said, this is really easy. You go, okay, is that an atom? Go ahead, please be covalent, please be covalent, please be covalent, please be covalent, because I can do that one really easy. Oh, it's covalent. Look, it stays the same. If it's ionic, oh yeah, I figured out charges and how many and yuck. Well, that's just the way it is. You gotta do that too. That's what we did the last time. Okay? Next one. Is C4HHCl2 polar or nonpolar? It does not have all hydrogens around the carbon, therefore it is polar. Duh! Now, if it had been C4Cl10, which doesn't exist, but if it was, that's the same thing all the way around. That's an equal distribution of electrons or electronegative uh, atoms around it, that is a nonpolar molecule. There's something in biology they use called carbon tetrachloride. 
Biologists are sadists. I'm gonna say it one more time so you understand what I'm saying. Biologists are sadists. Biology teachers are more than willing, especially for young kids who have impressionable minds. Let's make a bug collection. Let's go find bugs and kill them. Let's stab them in the heart, put them to a piece of cardboard. But so they won't feel the pain, give them a little dab of carbon tech applied, because it's like, for, uh, it, what's, uh, what's that kind of stuff called? Um, when they knock you out, chloroform. It's like chloroform, it's a version of chloroform. So they're alive, but you can stand the heart and they don't care. And that, they don't feel it. And then they die. Yay, biology. All right, practice problems. First set of practice problems here, show the dissolving water. Ooh, that's a toughie. The next one, tell me if the compounds are polar or non-polar. Not too bad, right? A little easier than the last assignment. Have fun.